We had this part that took over two weeks to machine, and every dimension on this thing had a tight tolerance. So I put all kinds of qualifying features in the program so the machinist could measure everything and make 100% sure it all checked perfectly. We got the part to quality, and when they were finished with it, they sent the CMM report straight to management without anyone else validating it. Out of 54 pages, every dimension was completely red except for one page. Everything was bad. Profiles, true positions, even easy dimensions like the overall length was bad. My manager was freaking out telling me, you need to go through this report and check the part yourself and see if it really is bad because we do not have time to remake this part. So me and another guy spent a whole day at the granite plate with hard gauges and a digital height gauge and we went through everything we could. And everything we checked was intolerance and directly contradicted the CMM report. But you know what? None of this mattered because the only thing this company cared about was having a good CMM report. So now I have to go to quality and convince them that they are wrong and they need to check it again. The CMM programmer completely blows up on me you mean to tell me that $10,000 height gauge is more accurate than this half a million dollar CMM? But I'm just over here like, well, considering that the height gauge is giving me the same readings as hard gauges, and the only thing that's showing different numbers is the CMM, then I guess I am. I'm sure you can imagine how that went over. We had to get management involved and his boss ended up telling him, look, go through your program just to make sure everything is good so we can shut these guys up. But what they ended up finding was that when the CMM established the datums, somehow they ended up getting shifted. So that made everything that was tied back to them out of tolerance. Quality ended up running the part again, and it was actually a good part. But there is two sides to this coin. While this was one example that I was right, there were several times that I felt that quality gave me a bad report. So I would go to them complaining, saying, I machined the part like this, and what you are telling me is impossible. Every single time I did that, I was completely in the wrong, and I ended up looking like a fool. Now, it wasn't always like this. I never went to quality looking for a fight. The CMM programmer we had was actually way smarter than I was, and I often went to him for guidance on GD&T. At the time, I just really didn't trust a CMM. But what I came to learn is that CMMs are just like machine tools, where the one programming it holds the key to its success. Whenever I stop going to quality with a closed-minded attitude just to prove that I'm right based solely off of theory and I started going to them with an open mind and asking them to show me what they were seeing so that I can understand what is happening and also why it is happening, then I started gaining much more of an understanding of both the world of manufacturing and the world of quality. And a lot of things that I once thought were impossible actually can happen and some crazy things can take place during the machining process. When I started listening instead of defending, we were able to pinpoint exact problems and change our machining processes to make better parts. But this does go both ways. In order to be successful, you need to have good communication. If you work in quality, you can't just say something is bad and expect the machinist to know how to fix it. They have to get good feedback or they could end up moving the wrong thing and get stuck chasing their tail all day. Now I know many of you have had similar experiences and we often take offense when someone tells us we're wrong, but we have to keep in mind that we're all on the same team. Everyone makes mistakes on both sides. When I started working with quality on these super complex parts, I gained a knowledge that I couldn't have gotten any other way. The things I learned during this time actually made me change a lot of my machining strategies and approaches. This made me a much more valuable employee to the company, and it gave me a lot more confidence when I was tasked with high-level complex parts. Likewise, I would explain to quality the different types of machining processes, which gave them an understanding of how the parts are produced. So whether you work in quality or machining, I would say join together and learn from each other because this is how you grow and how you get to that next level. You might be extremely good at one thing, but you won't really become top level in your field until you have an understanding of the entire ecosystem. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have a similar story. Don't forget to like and subscribe to help support free education and we'll see y'all next time.